Hello and welcome into this beautiful message today straight from the Spirit of God and that's always how these messages go forth. They go forth by the Spirit of God and I give God all the glory. When I read things through emails and the comments of you all just sharing with me how much your life has changed as a result of being rooted under this ministry for a year or a year and a half or two years because I think it's only been, we've only been ministering for, um, or I've only been ministering for about two and a half, maybe almost three years at this point. But for those of you who have been with the ministry that long and you reach out and you say, so much has happened in my life as a result of just learning and writing notes and pressing deeper and going more and, and just seeking out God more. I was just talking to um, my husband a few hours ago or about an hour ago about how hungry people are now. And believe it or not, Christians are the, we are the min minority. That means that there are a lot of people out there that actually do not follow. I mean, I'm talking about Christians who are hungry for the things of God. It's not common. We can just easily look around in our Christian circles or go to church and think that everyone wants God, but that's not true. And this is why I press hard every day because I know that there are people out there who still, they still need to know God. They still need to know Jesus. And not only do they need to know God and know Jesus, but they need to know his word and what it is that God has for them, the kind of life that God envisions for them because he doesn't just want you to exist. There are many people, uh, especially Christians, who just exist. They're not living life more abundantly, but the devil is a liar. That is what God, God's word says about you, that you should live life and you should live it more abundantly. And you should flourish and you should thrive and you should be blessed when you go in and blessed when you leave out. Blessed in the city, blessed everywhere. It's, it's God's will for you to prosper. And if anyone tells you otherwise, you, they're... <laughs> You have to realign what you believe and who you're listening to with the word of God. If people are telling you things that contradict what your word says, it's time for you to readjust who you're listening to because you've got to begin to take every thought captive. You got to begin to cast down imaginations that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. So anything that is going against what God's word says about you and your life, oh, you have to cast it down immediately. You have to cast it down immediately. I don't care who it's coming from. It could come from your friend, your best friend. It could come from a family member. It could come from someone who has claimed they've been walking with the Lord for decades. It doesn't matter who it comes from because the word of God is the absolute truth. And you have to know what it says about you so that you can begin to spot the lies when they begin to come at you. You could say, okay, I, this, is, this is true, but that part right there, that's a lie. Oh, I'm not accepting that. And there will be times where people will tell you things and a lot of it, most of it's true, but then there's a tiny lie in there. You have to begin to spot these things because you can't just accept everything from anyone. There's a time in my life where people would tell me things, and of course it was a lot younger, and that's, that's common when you're younger, where when people tell you things, you just accept it because you don't know anything else. But then as you begin to mature, especially as you begin to mature in Christ, you start questioning everything. You start questioning everything and it doesn't mean that you're moving through life as a, as a skeptic but it means that when it comes to people speaking into your life and speaking over you oh you're questioning it you're making sure to launch the word of god and i'm going to tell you something before i get into the message and this is what i learned as i begin to mature in christ and it's it's not for you to be rude to people it's not for you to um act like you're you're high and mighty or better than anyone else, but it is to move throughout life and your relationships using wisdom and with grace and excellence and just moving forward in righteousness with the Lord. I don't let anyone lay hands on me. I don't let any, there are people who just love to lay hands on people. I don't know what spirits you're trying to transfer to me. I only let very specific ministers of God lay hands on me. And these are ministers that I know have been with the Lord for, a cons they have a consistent track rec record with the Lord. Very consistent. I don't let anyone lay hands on me. I don't let anyone pray over me. I don't let anyone speak into my life, just anyone speak into my life. I don't let anyone just come into my life and say, I, the Lord see, gave me this for you. Oh, well, okay, I'm gonna sit that on the shelf and I'm gonna check it with the word of God. That's just some word, words to the wise, words of wisdom. Don't let anyone just lay hands on you. You don't know what they, especially if you don't know them, they don't have a consistent track record with the Lord. You don't know what spirits they're transferring. That's how spirits transfer, by the way. Don't let anyone speak into your life. 
if they don't have a consistent track record with righteousness and holiness and living according to the things of God. So I'll leave it at that. But I want to talk to you about divine opportunities. Because I sat down uh, this morning and I heard the Lord say, when I was sitting at my desk, he said, divine opportunities are coming your way. And this was a blanket statement. And I know when the Lord is giving me a blanket statement, that's not just for me, but it's something that he wants me to come on and share with you all. He said, divine opportunities are coming your way. So I want to first explain to you what a divine opportunity is. Because I know that if you don't know exactly what a divine opportunity is, you're not going to perceive it when it's right in front of you. You're not going to know when it's there. And, and it's likely, and we see this many times throughout scripture, and I'm going to give you an example of, a, uh, of an occasion. It's likely that you're going to miss the opportunity. You'd miss it. And there are plenty of times in my life where I know, you know, and I can't remember exactly what they were, but the opportunities, opportunities of God are always flowing. There's no shortage of divine opportunities. And I'm going to talk about that too. But I know there are times in my life where God has presented me with a divine opportunity because I was just, I, I just missed it because I just didn't perceive it, right? My mind was somewhere else. I like, I didn't perceive the times. But the beautiful thing about the Lord is that he redeems and there's always a constant flow of divine opportunities presenting themselves to you. You have to tap into that flow of God so that you can see it. And I'm going to talk about that. So what is a divine opportunity? One, it's a gift from God. A divine opportunity is a gift from God. The reason I'm telling you it's a gift is because once you begin to see it as a gift, you don't take it lightly. You begin to treasure it and value it as a gift and you begin to jump on it when it presents itself to you. Two, a divine opportunity is a pocket in time where God is inviting you to step into supernatural growth and acceleration. A divine opportunity is a pocket in time where God is inviting you to step into growth and supernatural acceleration. This is a pocket in time where things move quickly, where God wants to literally grab you by the hand and yank you up to where you should be because there have been maybe much delay in the past for some odd reason you got off track but then when god presents you a divine opportunity he's saying okay all of this happened in the past but i'm presenting you with the pocket in time where i want to catch you up i want to catch you up quickly so you can accelerate and so that you can experience supernatural growth the third thing that a divine opportunity is and does it is a way by which God is trying to bring increase into your life. A divine opportunity is a way by which God is attempting. He's trying to bring increase into your life. You have to be receptive to it. You have to allow God to do that. You have to perceive the opportunity. You have to perceive the time that, that you're in. So what I want you to understand is that there is no shortage of divine opportunities. So for those of you who are thinking, oh, there's many opportunities that I missed in the past, I'm sure. You know, I, I read all the time where people will comment or they'll sit, send an email or they'll say, I know this was an opportunity from God, but I missed it. The door closed or I, someone talked me out of it or I chose another route, I missed it. Or God, I know God has sent me my, my kingdom spouse, but I messed it up. Or I know that I know that God has given me the opportunity to get this new home, but for some odd reason, my account wasn't, like I messed it up, I chose the wrong thing, I made the wrong choice, whatever it is, you know. I know that the Lord had presented me with this business idea and everything was in the right place, but I chose, I went the wrong path. Somewhere, around, somewhere along the lines, you made a decision that wasn't in alignment with God. Here's the beautiful thing about the God we serve. He's a God who redeems, he's a God who restores. And there's always divine opportunities presenting themselves to you constantly, consistently. You have to get into the flow of God. And once you're in the flow of God, your eyes open to them. Your eyes open to a completely different world. And you begin to see. You begin to see all of divine opportunities that are, gotta hear me, that are coming your way. And you, you begin to catch them as they come. Catch them as they come. There's no shortage of divine opportunities. So you have to get into the flow of God and stay there. In the flow of God, it is the current of the living water. And in life, there's, you know, there's this life where there's flow. How do I say this? In the flow of God, it's the living water. And it's almost like 
within that flow, you have to stay within it because there's life. There's life in that flow. There's new opportunities. There's fruit within that flow. And it's always coming, consistent around the corner, always coming. I want you to imagine um, being in a river and it's going a certain current, like maybe it's flowing downstream, right? It's, it's flowing this way. You gotta get in this flow of the living water and just flow with it wherever it's going. And as you're going through this flow, there's gonna be fishes that come your way, right? There's gonna be plant life that you come in contact with. There's constant flow of water, right? And it's, it's not much friction either, right? Like, of course, you may come in contact with some rough spots, some rocks here and there. Let me know if you're following me, but there's not much friction either. But if you get in the flow and you start trying to swim upstream, but the current is going down, you're gonna be fighting. You're gonna be fighting trying to get upstream because the, it, it's not, the water ain't flowing that way. It is not flowing that way. You're gonna break your back trying to swim upstream when it, the current is going this way. Get in the flow of God and just begin to take advantage of the opportunities that naturally present themselves to you. Why? Because that's how God works. God will present you with an opportunity and let you decide. When you know that it's the enemy, the enemy never allows you, the, he never really gives you that chance to decide. It's more so pressure. It's almost like the, the enemy will present you with an opportunity and put extreme pressure and deadline on you to choose now, choose now, choose now, choose now. Have you ever, have you ever it came in contact with, and this is just an example I'm getting. Have you ever came in contact with a scammer or someone who wants to take your money and they're clearly they're running a scam they pressure you to make decisions quickly. Why? Because they're trying to they're trying to get away with whatever scheming they're doing. They're trying to pull the wool over your eyes. They're trying to make sure that you don't read the contract. They're trying to make sure you don't read the fine details. Anytime someone's trying to pressure you to do something quickly, they're wanting you to they're not wanting you to see everything, right? There's something they're hiding from you. God will present you with an opportunity. He'll never force force you to make a quick decision. He'll just present it to you and wait to see what you do. If see if you decide to take that opportunity and see if, or see if you do not decide to take that opportunity. It's always a choice that you have to decide, but he will never pressure you to go one way or the other. And let's say you do, just you don't take that opportunity. You miss out on a divine opportunity. Get back in the flow because there's another one coming right around the corner. That's how our God works. Get back in the flow always a constant flow of life and opportunities and 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 just chances to continue to be fruitful and continue to grow and prosper in the lord and live life more abundantly because he's always going to bring life to you he's always going to bring new new things to you ways for you to produce fruit ways for you to tap into that flow just get back in just get back in always new opportunities coming around the corner so however do you know this though that some opportunities, even though they're always, once you're in the flow of God, even though there's always new opportunities coming around the corner, please know this. There are some opportunities that are once in a lifetime opportunities. Meaning, yes, this opportunity is right in front of you. It's presented itself to you. The Lord's not gonna pressure you into going one way, one way or the other, but he's saying, here it is, it's for you. Just choose, choose this. And you decide just by hearing this message, well, I'm, I'm too scared to choose that, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go this route. So you don't pick the divine opportunity. You don't go with the divine opportunity. Will another opportunity come? Absolutely. That's the God that we serve. However, understand this. There's some opportunities that are once-in-a-lifetime opportunities. So will that specific opportunity come back around again? Most likely not. Most likely not. Will you get another one? Yes. Will that specific opportunity come back around most likely not so you want to take every divine opportunity as if it's the last time that specific opportunity will come your way you never want to take the things of god for granted you never want to take things god or god is giving you or god is gifting you for granted like i said that first point a divine opportunity is a gift from god and yes, they're always coming. They're always coming because that's the God that we serve. He's always bringing new, beautiful things into your life. But you never want to take it for granted to the point where you, you, you don't take advantage of it. And you just believe, okay, 
I'm not gonna take advantage of this because there's another one around the corner. No, no, it's not gonna be that opportunity though. That one is, you missed out on that one. There are some opportunities that are just once in a lifetime opportunities. So they're never present always, which means that it's never, whenever God brings a divine opportunity into your life, right? And it's a, div like it's, it's a div appointed time, the pocket in time that I was talking about, where God is inviting you to step into supernatural growth and acceleration. Whenever he brings this into your life, it's not present always, which means that it's not going to be just sitting there waiting on you to, to step into it for years, months. It's there and then it's gone. It's there and then it's gone. It presents itself, then it goes away. It presents itself, then it goes away. You have to learn how to perceive a God opportunity, a divine opportunity when it presents itself and move, move with faith. Move with faith, trusting that God is going to continue to see you all the way through. He will never bring you far and then drop you and leave you. That's not how we're, it's not the God that we serve. He wants to constantly take you from glory to glory and he's carrying you each way. Each level of glory you're on, he's, right, he's holding your hand the entire way. The entire way. But they're never present always. They're there and then they're gone. They're there and then they're gone. A good opportunity, a God opportunity, and you could write this down, it will always pull you closer to your identity in God. There's a version of yourself, and you know what that is. I don't know what that is. There's a version of you that God has shown you that you are supposed to be future you and this you is it, it displays the glory of god in a way that you've never seen before there's a version of you that is perfectly aligned or is really closely aligned to your identity and god and the the divine opportunities that god brings into your life it's always going to bring you closer to that version of yourself it's never going to take you away from that and this is how you know the difference between a God opportunity and, and an opportunity that the enemy brings into your life. A God opportunity also will never come to you on the level that you're at. It will always require you to come up higher. A God opportunity will never come to you on, like if you're here, the God opportunity isn't gonna, it, it's not gonna meet you here. It ain't gonna meet you here. It's gonna meet you here, right? And it's gonna call down to you to call you up. You have to go up to it. That's how God works because it's constantly pulling you from glory to glory to glory, higher, 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 greater and greater, greater levels. It's going to call from you from up here and you have to go up. It will never come to you on the level that you're at. It's going to always require for you to come up higher. It will, it will always require for you to stretch yourself and to go greater and deeper into the things of God. That's the God that we serve and it's beautiful actually. So I want to give you a, a few examples. So one of the most popular examples we have is how Ruth sees the opportunity to go back to Bethlehem, Judah, and not stay in Moab. Lord knows what happened to Orpah because she stayed. We know it, We know she didn't end up with a story like Ruth. We know that her story did not end up as marvelous and, and wonderful and magnificent as the story of Ruth, who ended up being the great grandmother of David. Literally, Jesus came from her lineage. Literally. What happened to Orpah? We can only speculate because she stayed in that land. She missed out on a God opportunity, a divine opportunity. A way or another example of seeing how this can go bad is we look at we look at um, Lot and his wife and I'm telling you, y'all, that was a divine opportunity to flee that land. The opportunity was there and it was gone. It was there and it was gone. It, it was gone as soon as it came. The only thing that she was ordered to do was to not look back. And she did and missed out on the divine opportunity, that pocket in time to leave the land. These are some of the things that can happen if we're just not obedient, if we're not taking advantage of the things God puts in front of us, Lord knows what happened to Orpa. We see what happened to Lot's wife. So I heard God say, I sat down and he said, divine opportunities are coming your way. And I immediately got excited because 
I've gotten pretty used to perceiving the times and the seasons that I'm in in life and knowing when it's a God opportunity. And I'm telling you, y'all, I jump right on it. And, and there are things that I've accomplished in my short life that it takes many people, like I said, decades to do. Why is that? Because I can perceive when there's a divine opportunity in front of me and I jump on it. I don't care what it takes. If I have to sell everything I got, if I have to give everything I got, if I have to put everything on hold to hop on that thing, I do it because I know when it's God. I know when it's God. So I want you to really like write these down if you have to, because if not already, and I feel this in the spirit, if God hasn't presented you with some divine opportunities already, because I, I, I'm, 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 I feel by the spirit of God that some of you have, your, you have a divine opportunity in front of you right now, whether that's a new job offer, whether that is you know, someone's about to give away their car, whether that is a relationship or a new home or whatever it is, I perceive that, I perceive in the realm of the spirit that there are some divine opportunities in front of a lot of you. And then there are some that are on the way to a lot of you. And I don't want you to miss out on it. So I heard God say divine opportunities are coming your way and it, <laughs> it immediately lit me up on the inside because it reminds me of it really, the closest thing I can think of is Christmas morning. It reminded me of Christmas morning. I got really excited. Um, and I wanted to share this with you all because the Lord had put it on my heart to share this with you all. So I want you all to make a commitment to jump on the opportunity. Don't hesitate on it. Do not. So I want to also, since I'm talking about opportunities, I want to present you with an opportunity to plant seed and fertile ground. As many of you know, this ministry is anointed for increase, and I'm a firm believer in seed time and harvest time, and I pray over every single seed. I was actually just, before doing this messages, I was, I screen, like I screenshot and I put in a little uh, folder all of the prayer requests when, when it comes to you all planting seeds, and I pray over every single seed that's planted so that God will move on your behalf because your seed speaks to God. How do I know that? I know from personal experience. Not only do I know from personal experience, I know from the countless testimonies that people have emailed in as a result of them just being faithful and following what the Lord has told them to do when it comes to planting a seed. Your seed speaks to God. So I do want to present that opportunity and listen to the Lord. What is the Lord putting on your heart to plant a seed for? And I encourage you to, I encourage you to tie a scripture to that. That's what I do. I tie scriptures to my seed. There are certain, and I'm gonna let you in on a little secret that I, that I do. There are certain ministries and ministers where every single time I listen to a message of theirs, I put a seed. I put a seed in the ground on that message. And I'm constantly, constantly putting seeds in the ground because I know the things that I'm believing in God for are big things. There are big things that I'm believing in God for. And I wish I had my KJV on me, but um, I'm gonna take you there. I wanna read. 2 Corinthians, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, one of my favorite chapters, um, and I didn't plan on reading this to you all, but I, I really, you know, the more that I go into this, I'm going to have to put this message in the Kingdom Economy playlist, <laughs> and there's an entire playlist on um, the principles that I teach on this channel when it comes to Kingdom Economy. So give me a moment, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up the chapter okay so it says um okay but i say this day he would show it sparingly you know give me a moment because i'm gonna go to this the common english bible version you guys can read it from the kjv as well so it says Give me a moment. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse six. What I mean is this, and these are the principles. This is just one of the scriptures that I, I use when I'm putting my faith and I'm, I'm, I'm putting my faith in the seed that I'm putting in fertile ground. I stand on literally second Corinthians chapter nine. The whole chapter is a beautiful chapter. Starting from verse six. What I mean is this, the one who sows a small number of seeds will also reap a small crop. And the one who sows a generous amount of seeds will also reap a generous crop. Everyone should give whatever they have decided in their heart, 
they shouldn't give with the hesitation. And I want to pause there because today I just sewed a specific amount into a certain ministry. And then I heard God say a certain number. And I like, I immediately said, yes, Lord. I mean, even though I just sold a certain amount, I immediately said, yes, Lord. And I just did it. And I was obedient. I was obedient to it. And there are just many beautiful blessings that are happening in my life almost on a daily basis as a result of me being obedient to the Lord on that level. So it says everyone should give whatever they have decided in their heart. They shouldn't give with hesitation or because of pressure. God loves a cheerful, cheerful giver. God has the power to provide you with more than enough of every kind of grace. That way you will have everything you need always and in everything to provide more than enough for every kind of good work. So you give so that he can be given back to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over. This is you working the word of God. Why is this? It says, verse 8, that way you will have everything you need always and in everything to provide more than enough for every kind of good work so that you'll constantly continue to get more to give back to other people. This is how it works. So I wanted to present you all with that opportunity. The link is down below. We're able to do beautiful things through this ministry and give you all wonderful resources just as a result of you continuing to obey the Lord in that manner. And it's a way that God is able to multiply things in your life just bring abundance into your life in the areas where you need it in so that you can go and do more for other people so i do want to present you all with that opportunity the link is down below in the description there's also many other resources for you there's daily bread the 365 devotional those who have uh purchased it already have had nothing but wonderful things to say about it um those of you who have grabbed the book I encourage you to go into the comment, the, not the comment section, the review section of Amazon and write a review. And if those of you who are in the Promised Land Mentorship and you have been receiving them for a year, if you could, if you want, you can go on there and if you would like to give a review, you can drop it in the comments here under this uh, message or go on Amazon and write it under the, the book itself, just so that people know what it's like to receive these devotionals on a daily, be uh, daily basis. And might I say they're extremely prophetic. There have been people who have emailed in and have said this, this one specifically, it touches on exactly what I'm going through in life. It's brought me to tears. It is, it's absolutely God sent. And so I encourage you to grab that devotional book um, because I know, I just know it's going to bless you. I know it's absolutely going to bless you. So there's many other resources for you below. I ask that you subscribe to this ministry channel and hit the notification bell and share this message. That is for you and others so that you all aren't missing out on these messages as they continue to go forth. I love you all so much. I'm always praying for you and I'll talk with you in the next message.